Hi, and welcome to another edition of Conversations with the Candidates. I'm here today with Donato Paglia, who's running for state representative. So, Donato, welcome, and why don't you, you. Um, start with why you're running? Why I am running? Uh, some of you remember me from my previous runs at state rep back in the early 2000s. Um, I had to give up my political ambitions due to personal and health issues. Um, however, two years ago, I had to have a heart transplant. I was in full, full blown congestive heart failure. And this second chance at life again inspired me to try to give it, just give it one more try and see what I can, see if I can pull it out. You never know. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm here. Great. Well, glad you're here. <laughs> um, why don't we start with uh, the opioid crisis? Um, I, there seems to be a lot of improvement. I know that there's a um, uh, overdose reversing drug out that is getting a lot of traction. Um, there are fewer people dying, but it seems like there are still people dying. Uh, work needs to be done. Um, what, are, what aren't we doing that we should be doing? Uh, this is one, this issue has hit me personally a few times in my life in recent years. I've lost a family, a family member to this and my best friend I lost to this stuff. And obviously most of this poison is coming in from south of the border. They're cutting the heroin and the crack and they're mixing it with the fentanyl. If this stuff is poison, this is the stuff they, it's elephant tranquilizer, basically. You're never going to stop this until you cut off the supply. The supply dries out, the demand will drop. Attack it at the source. That's my personal approach with it. It may be heavy-handed, and some questionable tactic, tactics may need to be used to do this, but I support it because I'm tired of seeing family and friends die, you know, so I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit more when you say attack it at the source? Do you mean we should put um, more more money into police work or? Um... Um, this gets into international politics, okay, however, sure. I wouldn't be opposed to clandestine operations south of the border. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I know another issue uh, more locally is affordable housing. Um, Beverly is, uh, has seemed to be really open to different affordable housing projects. I know um, especially there's one right around the corner that they're planning on at uh, Sawyer and Tozier Roads. But then you see places like Hamilton where just a couple of weeks ago they shot down a, a possible project and there's been a lot of trouble um, in terms of affordable developers getting projects there. Um, how do we, one, make it so that there's more affordable housing available and then also make it so that every community is, is playing a role in that? Again, my tactics here would probably be considered heavy-handed, okay. but this goes back to my a, a major reason why I'm running is the illegal alien problem. Mm -hmm. If you take all the illegals that are currently residing in the affordable housing Turn them over to ICE and have them deported. He'll open up all kinds of housing for the citizens and legal residents of this country. I know that sounds cold-hearted, mean-spirited, but that would be my approach. That'd be the first thing I would do. Okay. Um, what about the communities that, like, I know the state has a 10% threshold that they try to get every community at. What about those places that aren't at the 10%? Anything that you would do to kind of help I, them get there? I wouldn't interfere. That's their business. Let the communities decide individually how they are going to approach it. Okay. We'd only concern, be concerned here in Beverly in this district. Okay. That's it. All right. Um, talking about Beverly, I, Rantoul Street has been a, a hotbed for development. Yes, it has. <laughs> um, some might argue that there's been too much development there. I'd be one of them. Okay. So what, um, what would you like to see happen? Uh, on okay. that stretch. I live on Summer Street, which is between Cabot and Rantoul. Um, right down the end of my street, they're building, they built another one of them high rises. They built it right on top of an old swamp, an open sewer pit. Used, and now all the rats that used to live down in that area have all retreated into the neighborhoods. 
Mm. Huge rat problem downtown. Mm -hmm. And be, they're doing the same thing on every other lot available downtown in Rantoul Street, it seems. Mm -hmm. And everybody's complaining about it. I don't know how you're going to solve it unless the city wants to have a massive extermination project for all the ver you know uh, vermin that's down there. But I, I don't know. I, I, I personally want to see this, the, the, the amount of growth slow down a bit in the city. It's just too much too soon. It really is. There's no parking as it is. And then they're just, they're just compounding the problem. Right, right. Um, let's see, talking about um, development, and I, I know there's also been discussion about a new police headquarters where they are downtown is, is small. Long overdue. Yeah. It's, it's been there for as long as I can remember. Um, what role do you think the state should play in terms of helping to get that project along? Obviously, whatever they're willing to kick in. To specifics, I can't speculate. Mm -hmm. uh, a new police station should be built. I mean, they're living basically in, like, the side of City Hall, right? And they, and they have the garage out back for their cars, and that's it. They need a, a, a larger lockup, for one, I feel. Mm -hmm. I think they have one, maybe two cells. Mm. Um, they're, just, they're just holding tanks. Um, I'd like to see a new station. I don't know, open a suggestion as to, to a location. Yeah, I think one of the locations that was being tossed around was by the Cumming Center. That um, wouldn't be bad, centrally located. Mm -hmm. Just a quick shoot down 62 to the um, House of Correction in Middleton. That's true. Um, kind of along the lines of traffic issues, uh, Brimble Avenue has had um, the two roundabouts are, are in play there. It's I, a rotary. You're from Massachusetts. <laughs> um, there, uh, uh, there's a, an overpass that's kind of the next phase of the project. Mm -hmm. um, what, like, what role do you see yourself playing if you were Haven't to be elected? Haven't reviewed the plans yet, so okay. I really can't speculate on that. So I'm still waiting to see how the rotaries pan out. I really, I'm kind of eh about them as it is. I kind of like the original configuration that was there before. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people aren't accustomed to that. They don't know the, the cars in the rotary have the right of way. So you have the people coming off the straightaway thinking they can go right through them. Right. Um, I give it a little time. Yeah. I, I, that's all I can say about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like there are still people that have some trouble with, yes. with those rotaries. <laughs> um, kind of to expand to some, some statewide issues right now, um, specifically the state police. They've been in the news a lot lately. Yes, they have. Um, F Troop, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's turf battles with other law enforcement agencies. There's obviously the overtime scandal that they've been embroiled in. Um, what, what's your take on that problem, and, and what do you see as possible solutions? <sighs> Um, how to go about solving it, I really don't know. We need the law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I respect them. Most of them are, are good guys. It, and it, but it takes just a handful of them to screw the whole, up, whole thing up and make the rest of them look bad. As to what should be done, I don't know yet. I, I would have to personally look over all, all whatever information is available. I don't have enough to give you a sort of definitive answer on that yet. Okay. Um, I know there's been some some criticism on Governor Baker that he should be a little more heavy-handed. Charlie that. Faker. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? Do you think he should play a, a bit a bigger role? He's, first of all, he's not a Republican. He's a Rhino at best, but he's just a Democrat in disguise. He goes along with whatever the House leadership wants, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's been good as far as appointing judges. Mm. Um, I would like to, I would like to see a true conservative get into the in, into the governorship as opposed to a, just another Rhino Republican who's going to basically go along with the House leadership. Mm. I don't really think too much of him. Okay. Um, along those same lines, let's look at the legislature. How would you grade the work that they've done this year? What do you think their successes are or their failures? This year, well, as a whole, poor. Mm -hmm. There's a few that are okay. Mm -hmm. Some, most of, 
some of Jerry, I feel, is satisfactory at best. I like him. He's a nice enough guy, but I, I wouldn't have gone along with everything he's done. Um, I was reviewing the Beverly Citizen article today as far as the three ballot questions. Um, we only agreed on one. So two out of three, uh, I don't see eye to eye with them. Okay, why don't um, we can switch gears and talk no, about the ballot we'll question. No, continue with your original yeah. question. No, 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 it's okay, it's fine. Um, I know question one would set some nurse staffing We agreed ratios. on that one. Okay, where we, do you stand we, on that? No. Okay. No. I spent a lot of time in hospitals over the past few years. I don't want another government agency overseeing the nurses. It's just going to have more pressure on them, knowing somebody's looking over their shoulders, making sure they're dotting their I's and crossing their T's and only putting in X amount of hours per week or whatever it is. They don't need the added pressure. Mm -hmm. um, plus, it's just going to create a re unnecessary government bureaucracy mm -hmm. that the politicians are just going to fill with hacks. You know, the derelict in-laws and second cousins and the contributors to their campaigns don't need it. Waste of money, waste of time. And then they're going to spend more time and money trying to fix the problem when they see it doesn't work. Okay. Um, question two would create a citizen commission that would push for a constitutional amendment to overturn the Citizens United decision. Which would is... Please enlighten me. I'm, I'm not too familiar with that question. Oh, sure. Um, it's all, it's about campaign finance. I think it 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 um, I believe it allowed corporations to be considered as okay. People. I I don't know exactly how the questions worded. However, mm -hmm. based on what I do know about how they write these questions and present them towards the public, I would have to vote no. Because usually when you vote yes, again, you're creating another government bureaucracy to oversee things, and it's just going to waste more money to hire people you don't need okay. and interfere with, with the election processes of you know, people who, who want to contribute to a particular fund. Got it. Okay. Um, and then question three looks to repeal the 2016 state law. Um, that gives transgender individuals Bev All right, yes. public... Beverly being a, a fairly liberal city, I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this, but I really don't care. This question is completely idiotic. Why do you want men going into a lady's bathroom? That is, whoever thought of this is, is, was an idiot, in all, in all sincerity. Why do you want that? Stupid. Mm -hmm. No, just on principle. And if anybody's got a problem with that, they can come see me. Okay. Um, okay. Um, why don't we go back to the legislature? Um, are there any, any any bills or laws that were passed this year that you can think of that um, that you're in support of that you think was a um, that you're glad that made it through, and on the same token, are there any others that either were passed or, or didn't pass that you wish The um, only one I can through? think of offhand was one that was passed out of knee-jerk reaction last year, and that is the, the bump stock ban mm -hmm. in the state. Mm -hmm. Every firearms owner in the state received a letter from the chief of police in their city or town saying that they had to get, get rid of their bump stocks if they owned one. Now, I personally don't own one. I do own a few semi-automatic rifles, but none of them are compatible with a bump stock, so therefore I don't own one. Why they feel the need to confiscate private property based on the actions of an individual who, first of all, doesn't even live in this state. Just an overstep of government mm -hmm. on people's personal freedoms, God-given, constitutionally guaranteed freedoms. That, to me, was... That was basically a kick in the groin. No, I, that's, I, they overstepped their bounds on that one. Okay, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would agree with you too on that. Um, have, you heard, is, have you heard anything from potential constituents? Are they talking to you about gun control? Are they talking to you about no, other I, issues? I, I don't run my campaign in the traditional sense. Okay. I kind of operate on the sidelines. I kind of feel things out, but I have my own opinions and my own agenda. I like to handle things my way. Uh, another thing, I, I, I don't 
solicit nor do I accept contributions. This year I made one exception. I took an in-kind contribution from a friend of mine because he insisted on it and he helped me and we were supportive of each other. So I, 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 I don't want any outside influences on my approach towards government and how I will vote in, at, on Beacon Hill in the legislature. Okay. Um, anything, if, if a potent, like if a Beverly voter came up to you and, and wanted to know why should I vote for you? What? I would tell them, I'm not going to try to BS them. Mm -hmm. Some people, when I was collecting signatures, asked me my stance. Most said, fine. Some questioned it and they said, no, no, thank you. And when I, I answered them honestly. Mm -hmm. and they may not like my answer. Right. Most of them were in agreement with me. Those that didn't, oh well, they didn't have to sign my nomination sheets. Um, anything in particular that any other supports Beverly should be getting from the state that you think isn't happening <coughs> right now? Nothing in particular. My approach is I feel keep whatever money we have local. Why do we have to send it off to the state only to go, you know, down on our hands and knees and beg, you know, for them to give us the money back to do a project? Mm -hmm. If you keep the money here, you eliminate that. Are you, sorry, are you talking about, like, ta like taxes? Tax dollars. Okay. Why should we be sending it off to Beacon Hill just to ask for it back? Mm -hmm. Um... What about funding for schools? Do you think Beverly's getting it? Obviously, that's, that's the biggest thing in the budget. I know that. Funding for the schools, it, I don't have a, I need to review the information. I honestly, I haven't seen much of it. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I don't run my campaign in the traditional sense. I like to take things kind of at the last minutes and make a judgment call based on what I see. Okay. Is there anything that I haven't asked that you'd like to talk about? Um, not in particular. If, if you have any any other questions, is that it? Or? Yeah, um, I we can yeah, yeah I, we can go to if there's a closing statement you'd like to make or anything else you'd like to say. Um, not really. Okay. Just consider me on uh, on election day. Okay. That's right. it. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for conversations with the candidate.